Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Let's Interview the Candidates, the finalists of the upcoming Dragon Age Tabletop Campaign Season 3. I am here with one of our finalists, Nico. Hi, Nico. Hi, everyone. Hi. And as you can see, Nico has selected Jordan, who plays Roxana in the current Wizarding World tabletop campaign. Um, Nico has chosen Rox uh, Jordan to be the interviewer. Um, so without further ado, uh, why don't you take it away from here, Jordan? Oh, goodness. Well, um, I think with my first question, uh, just for me personally, season two was one of my favorites. So I'm very curious how Malik would have dealt with this. But if your character was present in season in the season two finale, would they have selected the same decision? And why, if they did, why would they have agreed or why would they have disagreed? He would have wanted to have the, um, the fate come back to the world. Uh, however, the repercussions, like initially that would be his initial thought, but the repercussions of having such a, a decision and having the impact of all that on the existing, um, in the existing life on, in, uh, on uh, out of the fade, I think that would, um, him being kind of like a spirit of kindness, it would just be so against his will to have people suffer through that. Although this is, I think to him would be a really difficult decision because you have to balance it. You have, there is no one right choice. Both decisions have, have repercussions, but I think he would prefer things to rather be the way they are and not have to, um, not have to uh, go with like something that is as extreme or something that is as uh, different as, um, you know, merging the two together and seeing what the hell happens. Because yeah. yeah. I, I was actually like wondering what you would go with because I remember your audition and what you told me about him, that he was a spirit and like seeing what way he would go because I would think he'd want the fade to come back, but him being a spirit of kindness, would that be the kindest decision? And mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of yeah. interesting to me. So uh, Dragon Age is a very expansive uh, universe. It's got so much stuff in it. And I think like with Hark's campaigns, it's introduced more aspects into it. So what aspects of the Dragon Age universe, specifically this one, would you most be excited about exploring with your character specifically? Um, I think with my character, it would be more of a focus on um, just him like him existing is kind of not something that actually happens usually in the world, in the Dragon Age world, and I think also in Hearts campaigns. Um, it There are instances of in Dragon Age where you have um, spirit-possessed individuals, which are not um, essentially demons or ab abominations, like, for example, Cole and Anders, and I found these to be really interesting characters because you kind of have to think about like how much of them is the spirit and how much of them is the human and basically exploring how um, they would interact with other people, how other people would interact with them and kind of the, uh, not the decision, but I mean the, their presence itself is kind of, um, it's going to cause some tension because we all know that spirits, if they, um, if they go against what if their nature or if they see things that are against their nature, they might turn and become demons. So this whole aspect of like spirits and demons and uh, the consequences of uh, basically having such an individuals in an individual in reality, like what what does that mean for the world itself and other people? Mm. So that, yeah. I'm kind of glad you answered that because that actually leads in perfectly to my last question. Um, because like obviously with uh, Anders had a very different dynamic with the spirit of vengeance than what Cole had and what his situation was. Mm -hmm. um, so like a possessed character is, is something that has been introduced before and has been used mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. So what new aspects do you hope to bring to this concept and maybe the dynamic between kindness and Malik? Okay, so I think um, him uh, being... Um 
so the the him being a spirit of kindness and also i think for the background that he has of him being from Tevinter, where basically um uh, there are mages have so much power and they're not much restraint with their power um so having a mage from Tevinter who has been magic and you know how to use it without much restraint of having like a chantry or someone to tell you oh no it's bad or some aspects are bad even blood even blood magic is sometimes is sometimes uh, done but like behind closed doors so like having a spirit of kindness that has all this information about all these things that are essentially might be harmful i think maybe that would be like um something new to add uh because you have um um basically from his family and his uh, upbringing he was not really exposed to um like the morality of certain things because his family were not really that uh, his parents were not really much of parents so i think mm. of him finding discovering his own way and finding the way to be kind to people without harming them and without unintentional bad things to happen i think that would be um what he would bring along i suppose yeah, because it, it kind of makes me curious him being from Tevinta and he seems, uh, from the way you've described him to me, he seems like a very kind and caring sort of person. Him actually interacting with like Tevinta and how he deals with Tevinta would be very curious to me. Like, how do you think he would have perhaps treated some of the servants or the slaves in his household? Would he have interacted with them? Would he have been allowed? I think um, from his parents' perspective, they would tell him, you know, don't interact too much with the servants. Don't, mm. uh, it's, not it's not becoming to like, you know, sink down to that level and like, you know, interact with these individuals because mages, especially from him being an altus, he basically is one of the highest social standings in the whole of Tevinter. So every, so his parents kind of look down on everyone else. And part of it is the, is the servant mages, but him being himself, being so kind and loving and nice he likes to like interact with uh, the servants especially with his nursemaid but she, she died I, I think also just one one more thing kind of going back to question two because i know you mm -hmm. wanted to explore this the spirit aspect with your character but you as mm -hmm. the player what do you find most interesting about this universe and like what would you like to explore as a player okay like the same thing so, okay so um I think what drew me most to the world of Dragon Age is just how impressive and expansive it is because, mm -hmm. and how, again, so much, how it's um, not like reality. Yeah. It's like a world with elves and mages and uh, Templars and all this political system that is so well established. I think the part that draws me, that uh, draw, draws me the most to it is probably the, um, the aspect just i know it's been done before but I, i'm still so intrigued by the templars and mages and their mm. interactions and how that differs from like Tiv from tivinter where um where it's basically the templars don't have that much of a role in comparison to um down south and ferelden and so on where the chantry kind of dictates um uh, what what is uh, what uh, basically dictates that you know mages should be in towers, mages should uh, do this. The Templars have to restrain them; they can't go out. They spend their whole life in there. So I think it would be really interesting to explore that kind of aspect. Mm. Yeah, because that, that's definitely actually the part that I get intrigued of most as well. So like, we gotta get on a call sometime and have like a dragon. Age story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my biggest reservation for you as a player. Um, purely based on first impressions. I am wondering if, by comparison to some of the other candidates, I'm wondering if you're going to be one of the more passive or quieter players. So I'm trying to wonder if I were to put you in this campaign as a player, um, mm -hmm. would you have a hard time competing maybe with some of the other players who might be more aggressive, who might be more assertive, who might just have a louder personality. Um, knowing that that is my personal reservation for you, how do you respond? Okay, so I've actually never done any D&D &D before. Well, I've done it once, but it was like 
30 minutes of uh at like the local comic con like we had the uh the role playing community they had like a little booth there and they were inviting people to try D D. so i kind of tried it and um i think um it really like opened a door in my mind it's like oh my god i really want to do this so i think i'm really passionate about this and i like in the beginning like i feel like in the beginning when i start talking to people i might be a bit quiet but then i feel that as i know get to know like the cast like if i were in this campaign as i get to know the cast and i get to know them more i feel like that would uh, i would like definitely be more confident to like talk about things also working in an environment where you kind of have to take the leadership role i'm kind of worried that might be a bit too much but I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't really tell you because I have not really been in that position before. But I do want to like do my best and like deliver the best possible for this campaign. I really, I, I'm really passionate about it. So yeah, that's my answer. I have plans okay. for you. <laughs> I'm actually terrified. <laughs> don't be, don't be. It's too, late, too late to pick a new person. <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> Excuse me for two days now. I have a be like, <laughs> can't wait to do the RP section. Hope you're ready. <laughs> so, I've kind yeah. of blown it out of proportion. Don't worry. It's completely fine. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I assure you. You are in the Western regions of Tavinta right now. I would say it's probably been close to a fortnight since you've left your family home. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's exactly a fortnight, you cannot tell, you know, you've been on the road for ages mm -hmm. and you come to a very aged, vast forest and okay. the cover is incredibly dense, no sunlight peeks through the canopy. And it's then you realize you're in the forests of ancient Arlathan. Mm -hmm. This place is ancient and full of memories. You know this. And as the sun sets, you find yourself getting weary. But you have a moment to yourself that you can think and reflect and maybe do something. What do you think Alec would be doing? At the, uh, Alec, sorry, Malik <laughs> would be doing at this time. Okay, so I think his uh, first, like after being, after realizing where he was, he would be really stunned and like looking around and examining everything around him. And then his instinct of like, you know, he's been surviving on his own for this past uh, couple of weeks. So he's going to try and look for any cover or any place to um, stay the night because it's getting dark and he doesn't want to have to deal with any um, beasts or monsters or anything. Mm. I will say the part of the woods that you find with the most cover is actually a small frozen pond and there's a rocky outcrop that goes over it um, and you can rest and nestle under there however what's curious is the pond is frozen and it's not cold enough to be frozen okay so um he's gonna get close to the pond and he's gonna examine it um can he uh, and he's gonna try and see any reason why this pond is frozen can you you look over it, um, it's kind of like if you've ever seen um, when, when the ice is frozen over and it's not particularly frosty, like you can almost see straight through it below. And you actually see a few little fish swimming around. And when you look at your own reflection, something's not quite right. Okay. And the air gets colder. Okay. And what's this the is... most peculiar about it is the reflection talks back to you okay so um he's gonna look down at the pond and kind of move his head there and there and like trying to see if the reflection would follow as character would it it does with the reflection okay but and what's yeah, curious ahead. sorry what what's curious is it's almost like it's, it's following you and it's copying you but not quite right Almost as if okay. someone was on the other side of the lake copying you, like that. Okay, so um, Malik would say, um, hello? And the reflection and stops and blinks at you. Hello? 
Oh, okay. This okay. This is interesting. Um, <laughs> hi. And he's gonna just raise his hand awkwardly. Hi. Um, <laughs> what are you? I have lived in this forest for a very long time. You may call me melancholy. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, and he's gonna just stare at the stare at the reflection, and for a while, and he's just basically speechless. Um, are are you a spirit? He's gonna ask. Yes. You oh. have a lot of sadness. How? Okay. Um, how do you know this? And he's just. He's just so taken aback that he's um, not really sure. He's just blabbering at this point. I can feel it. But what's and strange is your sadness is not your most dominant feeling. What would you say that is? Um, Malik is going to just stare um, at the pond with like a bit taken aback by the, the, the forwardness of the spirit. And he's going to ask, um, why do you ask this? Why are you saying this? I'm curious. You look so very sad, and yet that's not all you feel. And you're not empty like the other people. Yeah, I'm, I'm like you, but not quite like you, I suppose. And he's just going to, like look around and, and make sure that there's no one no one around he's you know because he's been staring at the spawn for a long time and then he's going to turn back and look at the look at the reflection and say um why are you here exactly why do you need to know about me i've always been here and you should know more than anyone spirits are attracted to people who are Unique. You are very unique. He's gonna um, look, he's gonna get, um, just sit down and kind of make himself comfortable knowing this is gonna take a while and he's just gonna <laughs> say, um, <laughs> all right, I'll humor you. Um, yeah, I am unique. In fact, I am a spirit too that is assessing this body right now. And you are correct. I have, in fact, been, I suppose you, the word would be feeling sad. Um, I have left the only home that I have known for a long, very, very long time. And I've been hoping to stumble across any company. I did not expect that my company would, in fact, be a spirit. So, your name is Melancholy. I am the spirit of kindness. But I have, um, I suppose, you were drawn to the sadness that I was feeling at the moment. Or, yeah. So, you are correct. Are you today? I feel melancholy, <laughs> he says. Okay, it's okay, friend. Um, yeah, we all do feel melancholic at times, I suppose. But um, do you mind if I camp out here tonight? Is this like your home? Am I allowed to stay here? Of course. And all he's right. kind of inclining his head like he's reading you. And it's at this point you kind of feel it's a very strange feeling. It's like you're lightheaded, but someone's got the, their palms and they're pressing on your temples kind of thing. Okay. He's, he's going to like wince and like hold his head and like, what are you doing? What's happening? You're not just sad. Sad for a reason. You're sad because of another emotion. It's more dominant than the others. Um, that, 
why are you so concerned about how I'm feeling right now? I'm all right. I'm me. I have been through a lot so far, but I am here and I am I don't want to think about what is happening in the past. So humor me, tell me what 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 um emotion do you think I'm feeling? What's his body language like out of curiosity? Is he kind of um Right now he's like gestic gesticulating a lot, like moving his hands around, obviously a bit flustered. Um, this is like also new to him. So he's a bit also terrified. Mm. And he puts his hand up against the ice and moves right in to look at you. There it is. You're sad because you're afraid. Um, how did you know I was afraid? And this is starting to get a bit, uh, he's starting to get to him, especially looking down at his own reflection, kind of talking to him like this, but it's not quite the same. So he's just, he just, he's like, okay, um, friend, I know you are, um, a spirit as well, but this is getting a bit uh, slightly strange. Why are so, you afraid? I am not afraid. <laughs> I'm I'm okay. I am all right. I am not afraid. And he's just saying this in a way, but he's obviously afraid. He's mm. rambling around. And yeah. But if you are not afraid, why did you run? Why did you run all the way out here? You are afraid. I feel it. Fear. Must you know everything? And he's just gonna say it like in a bit of frustration. All right. You want to know the whole story? Fine. I will tell you the whole story. He's going to like um, look down at the spirit and he's just going to say, I was, I've been through a heck of a two weeks. I am really, really tired. I was home with my, um, this body's father and uh, my father and my mother have essentially been my, and he's just going to falter for a bit and his hands are shaking a bit and he's gonna like um, continue and say, they have been what kind of, uh, what pillars me to this world to this point. I have seen that parents are supposed to love their children. I have um, been acting with other humans, but now I have come here and I have taken this body I have, and he's just going to trail off and look down and um, you can see that he's trying to gather his um, emotions and he's going to say, I almost got <laughs> bound. I was almost bound. I was so close. I was, and he's, his hands are shaking. I was so close to becoming what I despise the most. <laughs> And he's just going to um, look down at the right in the eyes of the spirit of Mount Kong. He's going to say, are you happy now? Or as you, you are happy, happy. <laughs> as you're talking, happy. the more upset and shaky you get, the more the spirit presses itself up against the ice. It seems the more afraid you get, the more intrigued it is. And then right. Melancholy says, are you sure your kindness anymore? Of course, of course I am. I've done everything I can to be what I am. I have been helping people on the way while I was making my way here. I have been protecting people as much as I can from the demons that have remained. I have been I, and he's just gonna, he's just gonna get a bit more shaky and a bit slightly more terrified now that the spirit is kind of getting a bit closer and seeming to be um, more intrigued by this. Mm. You're so sure, you are so afraid. There is so much fear and it gets colder and colder. Okay, so um, Malik is just gonna, uh, start um he's gonna start shaking from the cold and he's he looks at the spirit he, 
are you are you certain you're a spirit and his voice is shaking and it kind of breaks down it grins at you then okay. you're very um, perceptive okay i am he's gonna say i am not liking this okay uh focus he's um he's gonna take um his staff that he has with him and he's um going to try and um uh, cast a spell on the on the lake to just try and get it to melt like a fire spell or something mm. you cast a i'll say like a fire blast kind of thing yeah. and it goes <laughs> the flames lick up around the lake and the ice melts and then your reflection stands up and it's right in your face now and he's just gonna jump out of the face. oh my god <laughs> and he's um, He's just gonna uh, kind of uh, take take a uh, jump back as far away as he could from that spirit, and spirit, and he's gonna take um, take a staff and try to cast another spell, and he's gonna cast another fire spell at the spirit, or whatever that reflection is. As you prepare yourself, the spirit roars then, and it's got a big booming voice, and it says, "Convince me you're not afraid." And that's when you whip your staff and cast another spell. Mm -hmm. and, and it goes straight through. Doesn't do anything. Okay, this did not work. <laughs> um, he's going to take his um, staff and he's just going to try and gather himself up. And he's going to take, um, just kind of plunge it down on the floor and use it more, <laughs> kind of like a support, but not really. And he's gonna stand up straight, and he's like, and he's gonna say, "I am not afraid," as convincing, um, trying to convince the spirit as much as himself that he's not afraid. As you kind of square your shoulders and puff your chest out, it's very convincing, <laughs> and the spirit actually backs off, and he grins. Very good. I'll be seeing you again, kindness. And then he's gone. Uh, Lake is just going to look around and make sure that there is no any sign of the spirit left. Uh, once he's completely sure that there is no spirit around and not no remains of that reflection, he's going to go back and like hesitantly have a look at the small uh, pond. It is normal now. Um, you stare into the lake. Oh, well, the pond, sorry, not the lake. You stare into the pond um, and you see your reflection, your real mm -hmm. reflection. And as you look into the pond, you look at the fish in the pond. You marvel as a fish goes over to what you assume is a cluster of eggs. Almost looks like it's checking on the eggs. And something about that warms your heart. In fact, seeing everything in here warms your heart. And you remember, you are afraid sometimes, but not all the time, because what's significant about you is not your fear or your sadness, it is your kindness, because that's what you are. He is just gonna sit down and like admire everything that he can see. He would uh, just close his eyes and kind of go through what happened. He's kind of beating himself a little bit over it. He's like, I, I should not have been so open. I should not have shown like um, how much uh, I should not have spoken as much as I did. But then being along with the spirit, he should I he was more open because it was a spirit. And he assumed that this uh, that all that they are kind and that he can open up to it. But then he kind of beats himself up and tells himself, no. I shouldn't have done that, should have been more uh, more reserved, especially around this place. And mm -hmm. yeah, he's just gonna sit down and like make, try to make a camp together to um, uh, weather the night. Hi everyone, I'm Malik, and I may not always know what to do, I'm still young and inexperienced, but I would love to help make a change in this world, and I want to make the world a better place 
being a spirit of kindness, who else could you rely on to make the world a better place than a spirit of kindness? And thank you so much.